The creative economy is a vast, vast world. Here in New York City, that includes my new friends and colleagues for the day, the Times Square mascots. It's one of the toughest jobs in New York City and one that we rarely think much about. Working for tips from tourists who want to take photos with them, mascots faced a particularly brutal time during the pandemic when few visitors were coming here. Still, the people in Elmo and Mario outfits soldier on still hanging out day after day in New York's most well-known locale. We decided to take some time to get to know the people inside the costumes and find out what life is really like for them now. This was, uh, I have working here since about three months ago. One of my friends recommend me, you know, I have good empathy with, with the, the, the people, so I I'm, I'm, I'm feel good friendly. You try to, to make some money to, for food, for lunch, for breakfast, yeah, you know? We support with our family and make it not too much money, you know? No, 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 no. Pero she said, mask, oh, mini mask is good, beautiful, mommy, mommy, picture, picture. <laughs> While this experience may be the most common among the Times Square mascots, income inequality exists even here. Some claim to have built empires from nothing. Nakedness, even. Anyway, so I'm in Venice Beach, California, 1998, shooting for Playgirl magazine, which I thought was like a modeling lead. It would put me in a national magazine, potentially bring me into contact with a wider audience just because I was in print, even if it was a nude magazine. I was also trying to be a country singer. The photographer shooting me nude said, why don't you do it in your underwear or something different, which was right up my alley. I did, he called me Naked Cowboy, I trademarked it, got arrested like 30 something times. That's why I came east, I came to Times Square, it was so busy, I went day after day after day, and now I'm at 22 years, 11 months and 19 days. Wow. Uh, I'm a millionaire and I'll be a billionaire by the time I'm done. I'd stop until I'm the richest man in the world. And I own Naked Cowboy the name. Naked Cowboy, Naked Cowgirl is the same intellectual property. We have franchisees working as cowboys and cowgirls in other cities. I've been number one selling oyster in the country, Naked Cowboy oysters from the Long Island Sound. We have Naked Cowboy scallops, we have Naked Cowboy oyster hot sauce. We have a, two wines, a Bionier Blanc and a Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc and a Bionier that are paired with those oysters. and. You know, the merchandise and the licensing goes on. And I've got a nice new Lexus down in the garage with a big fur coat in the back. I have the dumbbells that I set out, a big mirror. I've, I mean, I'm part of the same garage 22 years, 11 months, and 19 days a day. Have you been experiencing any competition on your turf? No, I've never had competition in my life, except for the six federal lawsuits have all been resolved. He has sued me in federal court, and um, I said to the judge, he's a naked cowboy, I'm the naked cow girl, your honor. There is a difference, Your Honor. He went, that's a, the judge went like this to me. I know, young lady, and case dismissed. So, the day in the life, you know, I love uh, Times Square. It's always been uh, my sanctuary here. I did meet the naked cowboy, and I remember giving him a $5 tip, so I'm not cheap. It's just fun. I married a naked cowboy in 2013. That's how I started to do naked cowgirls. So it's You're fun. married to the naked cowboy? Yes. You know, there's a lot of jealousy, a lot of hate. Speaking of the naked cowboy, he doesn't like big tits on a woman. A lot of crazy people. <laughs> and it goes like this. I know who I'm a champion. Look out for the album dropping next year. I accept the king of love, and now he operates through me. Things were starting to get weird. I felt it was time to suit up and make sure I'm ready to keep the peace if need be. And hopefully get someone to ask me for a picture. You guys want a picture? So now it's time for me to go undercover as a Times Square mascot and see what's it really like to be here for a full day. I didn't encounter any types of issues as I joined the Times Square Justice League, but a retired Batman wanted to make sure that I knew there are rules to this. Yeah, I was Batman. Now I am photographer, but for many times I was working like Batman right here with the tourists all the time for five years. The people want to speak with the characters, so just for tips, because the rules are only for tips. You know? Don't forget that, eh? Yeah. No, no asking of people, give me money, give me money. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> but you are superhero now, working That's in right. Times Square. 
No one really knows for sure how long these mascots have been here. Were they here in 1904 when the New York Times moved their headquarters here? There is just no way to tell. What we do know is that recently the city council made things harder, not easier, for the people who earned a living this way. In August, it passed legislation requiring costume characters to stick to designated zones, an attempt to curb unwanted soliciting in the area, mostly unsuccessfully. Although maybe we've all felt a little annoyed when a character walked up to us when we were rushing through Times Square on the way to work, I think we can all agree that these characters enliven the city. I've definitely come away from this with a better understanding of what it takes to be a Times Square mascot. It's a hard day's work with very little reward these days, and although the city's legislations are not helping matters, what has really impacted these people has been COVID. It didn't feel like I needed to stick to any particular areas as I walked the streets as the one and only Mr. Incredible. At least, I thought I was the only Mr. Incredible. Do you want a picture? said she had a real Mr. Incredible at home. Respect. Do you want a picture? So after spending a day as a Times Square character, I've learned a lot. I can't imagine what it's like to do this day in and day out. It is exhausting. You have to deal with a lot of rejection and a lot of crazy people out in Times Square. There's, there's a huge sense of camaraderie among the different characters in Times Square. You know, walking around, I feel like I made friends with a bunch of them. We'll wave to each other. The Naked Cowgirls were very friendly. So is the Naked Cowboy here. Here are my friends Elmo and, and Minnie over here walking around and saying hi to everyone. Uh, overall, you know, it, it's hot out here. I can't imagine what it would be like in, in the dead of winter, in the freezing cold. It's a tough grind, you know. People, people really do what they have to to make a living. And it was really interesting to hear their stories and, and what they do with that money with their families and how the COVID pandemic has impacted them. And that's a wrap. Mr. Incredible, Times Square, out. Get her there.